bijna 50 kilometer, hè? 50 kilometer van dit, jongens. Ongelooflijk. Hobbel, hobbel, hobbel. Ik noem eens een snelweg in Polen. Dit, dit, dit is alleen in Alkmaar de Munnikenweg, nou, die is nog niet eens een kilometer lang. <laughs> Dan denk je het gehad. that you were able every night to dream any dream you wanted to dream. And you would naturally, as you began on this adventure of dreams, you would fulfill all your wishes. You would have every kind of pleasure that you see. And after several nights, you would say, well, that was pretty great. But now let's, um, let's have a surprise. Let's have a dream which isn't under control. Well, something is going to happen to me that I don't know what it's going to be. Then you would get more and more adventurous and you would make further and further out gambles as to what you would dream. Finally, you would dream where you are now. This is the site of the largest mass murder in the history of the world. Auschwitz. 1.1 million people died here. More than the total of British and American losses in the whole of the Second World War. This is the story of the evolution of Auschwitz and the mentality of the perpetrators. It's a history based in part on documents and plans only discovered since the opening of archives in Eastern Europe and informed by interviews with people who were there, including former members of the SS. And if you ask yourself if this is really necessary, you say to yourself, yes, of course. We've been told that these are our enemies and there is a war on. But the horrors of Auschwitz did not occur in isolation. The camp evolved alongside the Nazi plan for the conquest of Eastern Europe, a war of destruction unlike any other in modern times, one in which innocent civilians were murdered by special killing squads. The order said they're to be shot. And for me, that was binding. As the war developed, Nazi decision-makers conceived one of the most infamous policies in all history, what they called the final solution, the extermination of the Jews. And at Auschwitz, they journeyed down the long and crooked road to mass murder to create this, the building which symbolized their crime a factory of death. There were the people screaming, all the people, you know. They didn't know what to do, scratching the walls, crying, until the, the, the gas took effect. If I close my eyes, the only thing I see is standing up. Women with children in, in their hands there. What follows is the surprising story of the birth of Auschwitz and the Nazi policy of mass extermination. With Auschwitz initially built for an altogether different purpose than the gassing of the Jews. And the Nazis evolving their wider policy of killing in ways that defy the popular myth of the SS as robotic killers who simply acted under orders.
In the spring of 1940, Captain Rudolf Hess of the SS journeyed through Poland to take up the job of commandant of a new Nazi concentration camp. Hess was traveling to the outskirts of the town of Auschwitz, in the midst of territory snatched by Hitler during his invasion of Poland the previous year. Here, Hearst would create this concentration camp, the very first Auschwitz, which was later known as the Stammlager, or Auschwitz I. But when Hearst first arrived in April 1940, few of these buildings existed. This infamous concentration camp began life as a collection of dilapidated former Polish army barracks set around a huge horse-breaking yard. The task wasn't easy. In the shortest possible time, I had to create a camp for 10,000 prisoners using the existing complex of buildings, which were well-constructed but were completely run down and swarming with vermin. And this first Auschwitz was built not to hold Polish Jews, who were to be confined elsewhere in ghettos, but chiefly Polish political prisoners, anyone the Nazis considered a threat to their occupation. True opponents of the state had to be securely locked up. Only the SS were capable of protecting the national socialist state from all internal danger. All other organizations lacked the necessary toughness. The Nazi occupation of Poland was to be brutal. They wanted to make the Poles a nation of slaves, and it was to help them achieve this aim that the Nazis first built places like Auschwitz, modelled on concentration camps they'd already established in Germany. Hearst, who had worked in concentration camps since 1934, knew that his task was to create a place that would strike terror into the Poles. But the gas chambers for which Auschwitz was to become infamous were not yet conceived. Hearst even adopted the cynical motto of Dachau concentration camp in Germany, Arbeit macht frei, work makes you free, and emblazoned it on the new gates of Auschwitz. The Polish prisoners now arriving at the new camp were subject to appalling treatment from the SS. Over half the 23,000 Poles first sent to Auschwitz were dead within 20 months. Jerzy Bielecki was imprisoned in Auschwitz because the Nazis suspected he was in the Polish resistance. Once there, the SS sentenced him to hanging torture, a punishment favoured in other concentration camps as well, where the prisoner was made to carry his full body weight on arms pulled back into an unnatural position. He wanted to hang me on the hook. He said, stand up on your toes. Finally, he hooked me and then he kicked the stool away without any warning. I just felt Jesus, Mary, oh my God, the terrible pain. My shoulders were breaking out from the joints. Both arms were breaking out from the joints. I'd been moaning and he just said, shut up, you dog, you deserve it. You have to suffer. Appallingly violent as life was at Auschwitz, the camp itself was not yet a major priority in the Nazi scheme of things. So much so that in those early days, Hearst was forced to go scrounging for basic supplies. Since I could expect no help from the inspectorate of concentration camps, I had to make do as best I could and help myself. I had to drive as far as 60 miles to Zakopane and Rabka just to get some kettles. I didn't even know where I could get a hundred meters of barbed wire. 
so I just had to pilfer the badly needed barbed wire. After a day of pilfering, Hurst returned home to a house on the edge of the concentration camp. Here he lived as he thought a Nazi conqueror should, and treated the prisoners as his serfs. <laughs> 